Can you see this awesome view? Check this out. We just hit the part where we can see the lake and it's amazing. Oh my gosh, it is beautiful here. A rest area <laughs> listed in the GPS. So a rest area that popped up on our Garmin is actually a brothel. We should tell them about the bear we had in our campground today. It was a bear of a time. We left San Diego and we headed to South Lake Tahoe. Yeah, we had never been there, so we were really looking forward to it. It took us two days to get there because it was over 550, 600 something miles. Mm -hmm. The first night we stopped over at Boulder Creek RV Park. It felt like we were in the middle of nowhere and technically it's in Lone Pine, California, mm -hmm. but it was a really nice, pretty park for being in the middle of nowhere. Ready to roll? Let's do it. Okay. I'll clean this spot right here. Yeah. Now we're good. Okay. <laughs> We like to split our two day travel days up. So the second day is usually shorter. So it's kind of like, woohoo, we're there in shorter time. Usually. Usually, but this time was a little bit different. We are encountering a new problem, something we've never had to face in three, over three and a half years. Fire. Fire. We are in <laughs> California and we have been pretty aware of different wildfires in different areas that we're going. Unfortunately, about 30 miles south of Lake Tahoe is a big wildfire, the Tamarack, Tamarack, fire, yeah, Tamarack fire, and it happens to be along our direct shortest route to our destination. It's currently 50,000 acres and it's only 4% contained as yeah, of yesterday. About 100 miles out of our trip. So what was supposed to be the shorter of the two days is now the longer of the two days. It took us a lot longer to get there mm -hmm. because we had to go around them. It can be difficult to know what roads are going to close or have reopened. Uh, so we just kind of went around the whole thing and came in from the east side. We did a lot of research before traveling on that second day too. We wanted to find out where the fires were, mm -hmm. what roads were blocked off, and sometimes the GPSs don't have the up-to-date fire lane road closure stuff yeah. either. Next issue. Oh, we just turned on 168. Daisy, sit. Yeah. Daisy, sit. We just turned on 168, and the GPS says it's fine, but there was a sign back there that said anything 30 feet from the kingpin to the rear axles is not recommended. Well, probably a little less than that, but I don't think I want to take this road just to be safe. How the um, heck are we going to turn look, around on this road? I can just, I can leave you right here. But I'm going to go up 395 to 6 and let it reroute. Yeah, I don't like the idea of having to make a Yui. I mean, you see all these posts and stuff along the side here, right? Yeah. I don't like this kind of stuff. Like Yui's with it's the better, big It's business. better to do it here while we can versus down the, down the road when we're in esk turns and switchbacks. We don't want to do it there. Like a boss. No problem. I have to go super, super slow on something like that because the triple axles just drag. Oh, yeah. We actually left skid marks back there. The tires drag. Yeah. That's not good for the tire. You know, it's something you don't want to do often if you can avoid it. Continue on Nevada 360. It's so hazy, it's so weird to see like there's a boat out there. It's weird, it's kind of an eerie feeling at this lake to me, but 
because yeah. it's so hazy. Arrive oh. at Hot Guest Ranch. What? No. <laughs> Wait a minute. You didn't run this by me. <laughs> it's, it's a rest stop? It's, a, it's listed as a rest stop. It's the Guest red light Ranch. district. Shut up. Wait, is this a... Is this a... Turn, just turn around here. Madam Suzette's red light district. Well. So the arrest area <laughs> listed in the GPS. So a rest area that popped up on our Garmin is actually. So he says. It, well, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I didn't get here by memory. <laughs> <laughs> We're at a brothel because it's Nevada. It's called Kit Kat Guest Ranch. Yep. And back there, I see <laughs> RVs. So I don't know if that's like a one of the like a nudist RV camp or what. It's got an RV camp and a gentleman's club. See the gentleman's club right here. Oh, oh that's new. And only for gentlemen. No, well, you're out. <laughs> The air is filled with smoke, you can see it, and I can certainly smell it, so we only have 18 miles to go until our destination, so that worries me a little bit. This is quite the road for the, to drive the RV on, huh? Holy crap, look. I also think that this road is really pretty and would be really good on the motorcycle, but it's a little scary to me to be towing the RV on it. That's why I'm not the driver. It took us over 100 miles out of our way, mm -hmm. which does stink, but we got there safely, except for that last road in that I I thought we were gonna die. <laughs> it was one of the scariest roads, in my opinion, that we have been on up to this point. It, traveling down these kind of roads, it works out better if you just don't look up. That's true. Just don't look out the window. It was, uh, I believe it was uh, Nevada 207 that mm -hmm. we were taking in, and the reason it scared me was because it was very curvy and a lot of twists, but it was also very, very narrow mm -hmm. and little to no shoulder. Tight turns, yeah. tight lanes, scare me to death. Yeah. With a big fifth wheel like this, it's no different than like a big semi tractor trailer. You're going to have to use both lanes sometimes and people are just going to have to kind of deal with it. <laughs> I don't like it one bit. Lake Tahoe spans across portions of California and into Nevada. It's a huge lake. Mm -hmm. And the border comes right up there to South Lake Tahoe. So coming in from the east, we go through all the Nevada side, which means casinos and big buildings. And then all of a sudden, state line, boom, it stops. Yeah, <laughs> it's totally different. But once you cross the state line, it feels different. It looks it's different. It's totally different. It's less, I don't want to say less commercialized because there's still a lot of stuff because mm -hmm. it's a highly populated vacation destination, but there's no real big tall casinos and all that stuff. So mm -hmm. it was it had a different feel. Yeah, it's an immediately a much better feel, yeah. I think. <laughs> yeah, and then we finally made it to our campground, which was Tahoe Valley Campground. It is a Thousand Trails mm -hmm. property, and this place was enormous. Yeah, and we were getting in on a Thursday, so that means, you know, people that go out for long weekends are just getting in. It's a little busier. Fridays are usually busiest yes. for campgrounds on the weekends during the summer. There are over 400 sites at this campground. Yeah, this and, place is huge. And it's a great park for families, a great park for kids, because there's a lot of stuff for the kids to do, mm -hmm. a lot of stuff for the families to do. Once we get up there, we'll have to get the motorcycle out of the back. So he says, it's pretty tight up there. Are you ready for this? <laughs> you know, the trees are amazing and beautiful oh, yeah. and so tall. The only part that was bad about that, it was maneuvering around to get to our site. So mm -hmm. that was a little bit tight. And then we got to our site and the site itself was a little odd only because it was at a strange angle. It was big though, it was nice. It was a nice size yeah. site, but it was just an awkward angle. So it took a lot of, you know, the back and forth and the wiggle and doing all of that to get in. There's one part where you can see that you have about this much space between the RV and one of those enormous trees. Hey babe, I can't see on the passenger side, so I just want to, do you want me to go check real quick and just make sure there's nothing up there? Hold on. There's a tree over there, so I'm gonna have to watch that, but I think I can miss it. Yeah, you're okay right there, right now. Hold on, hold on. Now I can't see the driver's side, but you're okay. You got like two feet. Yeah, I'd rather you keep an eye on the driver's side for me. I can see the passenger side pretty well. 
I know you're going to have to pull up and then straighten out because you're heading right into this tree. Can you come look up in front of me? Yes. Because there's only one of me to be able to watch, and I'm running back and forth from side to side to make sure he wasn't hitting something over here, something over here. The next day, we just wanted to get out and explore the area, drive around, get a feel for it, find a place to eat, lots of breweries around. We have no idea what there is to do around Lake Tahoe. <laughs> yeah, we didn't uh, really look it up. We know there's stuff around here. We know oh. there's a lot of stuff. So yeah. we're just gonna go out and explore. We've got a brewery as our target. We didn't do really any research at all on South Lake Tahoe and what there was to do because this was a last minute thing for us. We didn't have yeah. this in our itinerary. It was just something we that popped up. We didn't have an up. itinerary. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and it just came up last minute and we thought, let's just go for it. We yeah. found Coldwater Brewery, which was really yeah. cool. It was really good. And there's, mm -hmm. there are a lot of good restaurants and breweries in the oh, area. Yes, definitely. A lot of them are bikeable. Or walkable. Or walkable. We're here at Swiss Chalet Village. Water Brewery. Those are good. <laughs> are they? I'll be the judge of that. Oh, yeah. Dinner was a success. Dinner was awesome. One of the positives about the campground where we were staying is that there are so many restaurants, breweries, um, different places to, to eat, right within walking distance, mm -hmm. biking distance, so many things right around there. So we did a lot of eating. Yeah, which Tahoe. we never do, we never eat. We did significantly more dining outside of the RV in this trip though. Yeah, speaking of this campground and its location and proximity, it's huge, it's 439 sites. I think there are even some cabins, some like six person cabins and four person cabins. Yep, and there's different sections throughout the campgrounds and they have large areas for tent campers, which is kind of cool because sometimes you wanna go camping and you don't have an RV, but you also want some of the amenities for the kids and stuff. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people did that on the weekend. So the tent areas were packed to the max was, on the weekends a, for was, sure. It was a kid fest, absolutely. Yeah. There was tons for them to do. They've got basketball, pickleball, these like huge entertainment areas where they were doing karaoke almost every night. Yeah, so they have a lot of activities <laughs> yeah. too. They have activities for the adults, activities for the kids. Mm -hmm. There are trails all around this campground. There are biking trails, walking trails, hiking trails. Trails. There's even some areas where the kids can take their bikes and do some little oh, BMX yeah. uh -huh. type of stuff yeah. where they're jumping and doing all of that. There's a pool, pickleball, tennis, horseshoes, playgrounds, ice cream, <laughs> general store with snacks, and it was uh, just an amenities packed place. Again, awesome for families. And honestly, for the most part, it was pretty quiet around our RV, except for the first few days. Yeah, we had that one neighbor who liked to keep their dogs outside in crates and then just leave. And then of course, they want to protect their castle and they bark at everything. Nobody around. Just barking dogs. So after that um, group of campers left, we had a pretty quiet time. Yeah, it was the a nice place. Mm -hmm. It was nice. Our last site had lots of birds who decided they would relieve themselves on our patio. The birds made our patio their restroom facilities. <laughs> hey, our neighbors with the really loud barking dogs are gone. Thank goodness. We are walking distance to a couple restaurants, so we're just gonna walk down the road and get some brunch. There's Bert's Cafe and Ernie's Cafe. <laughs> uh, I don't know if they're related or I'm not, but it's pretty Bert's. funny. But Bert's Cafe, I think, is what we're gonna try first. It's the one across the street, but it has more Eggs Benedict for you. So I love coming. my Benny. Yeah. And it looks like we're going right over They were really busy and the wait was about an hour and a, half, and a half or so. So we decided to go back across the street and go to Ernie's. Apparently Bert and Ernie had a falling out in their restaurant venture and they got the right restaurant. <laughs> we waited about 30 <laughs> minutes at Ernie's and had a wonderful breakfast and it was a really cute place. 
<laughs> Look at the size of that biscuit. That was delicious. It's very good. Very good. A little tip. The Eggs Benedict is not on the menu, but they do have it on the weekends. Yes. The drawbacks of so many wonderful, beautiful trees <laughs> was they were bleeding. <laughs> they were bleeding they sap. They were bleeding sap. Sometimes you just wouldn't see it. It would be a big glob of it on the ground. And one time I took Daisy for a walk and we're walking and we're getting back and she's just walking funny. I'm like, what's wrong with you? Come on. And then I get her inside so and oh, she had sap bigger than her feet on her feet. Oh. It took hours. It took me a long, it took long a time. Couple hours to cut that out. To get we that were out. trying everything. So I'm looking online and I'm like, okay, baking soda. I looked online and it said a baking soda paste helps. I think it helps a little. It said put mayonnaise on it. <laughs> we got sap and baking soda and mayonnaise. Oh my gosh. So stay tuned for how we attempt to solve this problem for Daisy a little later. It's hilarious. Poor puppy. I wish we had just gone to bed instead of going for a walk. But it's like five o'clock. I don't care. So it's finally time to get Lucille out. Oh my gosh, we haven't been out on <laughs> Lucille all summer, it seems like. Because we've been in Vegas and all kinds of silly yeah. places that are too hot to get out on the motorcycle. And we're going to go ride around the lake, get some lunch. Yes. Do some, do some exploring. The sun came out finally, and I can actually see blue sky today. So I don't know if that means that the oh. smoke has kind of dissipated from the rain. Hopefully so. Looks nice, looks nice. Yeah, let's I'm excited. Let's, let's do it. Do it. decided to take the Emerald Bay Road loop that goes all around the entire circumference of Lake Tahoe. And it was a 75 mile round trip for us. Yeah, not a bad trip. We have a quick favor to ask you guys. Yes, and it's really easy. If you would please click the like button and the subscribe button down below, that would help us out tremendously. It would, and it will help us to be able to continue providing this free content for you. Mm -hmm. Back to the show. The west side of that route was amazing. Oh my gosh. Amazing for a motorcycle because there's lots of good hairpin turns, good quality road. Not something I'd want to take our big RV on. No. <laughs> because there's a lot of areas where it's just a, a drop off.
decided to pull off on one of the uh, most scenic overlooks on that route, mm -hmm. which was Inspiration Point, where you can look over Emerald Bay, and from there you could see Finette Island. I think I'm saying that right. Wow, that's pretty. So pretty. It was a busy overlook, but you know, it was so beautiful from that vantage point. I believe it was about 600 feet above the water mm -hmm. from there. So it was just beautiful and it just got us excited to keep going. Yeah, the views are just amazing. And the contrast of the hills and mountains with that crystal blue water. Oh my gosh. Such a beautiful place. That water is just spectacular. Mm -hmm. We finally made it to Tahoe City, which is where our destination for lunch was going to be because mm -hmm. we like to eat. <laughs> we went to Bridge Tender Tavern. This place was cute. And by the time we got there, it was after a normal lunch hour. So mm -hmm. we got right in. It wasn't busy at all. This place had a very rustic cabiny vibe to it. The food was really, really good. A little health food? Mm -hmm. Healthy. <laughs> all healthy all the time. As soon as we left the restaurant and continued our clockwise tour, that's when we really noticed the traffic starting to build up because that's when we started getting into a little bit more of the heavier populated, more tourist areas. So there's a lot more traffic. So there was a lot of stop, go, stop, go, stop. Go, Which is stop, really go. fun on a motorcycle when you have to, you know, do the clutch and everything. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So Tahoe City took us a while to get through, but it looks like a really cute place to go on vacation in the summertime. I bet it's awesome in the wintertime. And then we made it to about 12 o'clock on the clock. <laughs> the north, on the our north, route? northernmost point. Yeah. And of course, that's where the state border is, and of course, that's when the casinos pop up. Crystal Bay, <laughs> I think, is the first little town when you cross the state line into Nevada, and it's all of a sudden mm -hmm. casino, 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 like, you know, because so that way people who are staying on the California side don't have to travel very far mm -hmm. to get their gambling. It was just a stunning other side of the lake view, and the sun was a different direction. It was mm -hmm. just, it was beautiful. Yeah, the whole, whole ride was just awesome. Mm -hmm. You showing everybody how dirty our RV is? <laughs> Maybe the dirtiest ever. Oh boy, oh boy, oh my gosh. Okay, now we're gonna share with you how we tried to solve the problem of Daisy's feet and this tree sap. Tried and failed. <laughs> Got a surprise for you. Got your little booties. New little booties for the dirty ground. What's going on, Puffer? Look <laughs> at those little boots. Oh my gosh. Good girl. Good girl. She's like, what are you doing? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing to me now? You a big chicken. You ready? You ready? Oh my god. Oh go. boy, what is that? Oh <laughs> no. It's okay. Oh, puppy. It's okay, you wanna go for a walk? You go for a walk? She's like, um, can you take this off of me? I have to. It's okay. You good girl, you wanna get treat? Oh, Chad! 
<laughs> so poor Papa Doe. I'm so sorry. Daisy, come here. <laughs> oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> it's starting to rain harder now. The rain has gotten worse. <laughs> we tried. We tried really hard. We're canceling the farmer's market. We're out of here. It's a beautiful 73 degrees in Lake Tahoe. And it seems like this, the air keeps getting clearer and clearer yeah, as far nice. as the smoke and stuff. So mm -hmm. we're going to try out this awesome bike trail that they have in yeah, this area. Yeah, there's a bunch around here. They're, yeah. kind of, they're kind of staggered and scattered, but there is a map that we'll share. And there's also bike trails that, I don't think that they're continuous, but they go around the lake. So there's different parts of the lake where you can ride next to mm -hmm. and stuff. We're just gonna go from the campground and ride through town and just sort of check that out this time. There is a trail system that can take you all the way around. And you can go to all trails or different places like that to find them all. They're not all completely connected because some of them kind of stop then you have to cut over. Mm -hmm. But you can get all the way around the lake, which would be really neat. We weren't gonna do that this time because we just took the motorcycle all the way around. <laughs> what we wanted to do was go the other direction and kind of ride through town and just see what we see. Mm -hmm. And it's still pretty easily marked on the roads and the trail signs. And that's where it sometimes can get confusing. You mm -hmm. have to watch for the trails. And if you have the All Trails app, you can download the map and kind of follow that. Yeah. So it gets a little bit confusing when you're going through neighborhoods. We love our helmets because they oh, have the Bluetooth yeah. in them. So whichever one of us is riding in front, we can say, okay, we're taking a right, or there's mm -hmm. a car coming. They are fabulous yeah, for those... e-biking, especially when you don't know where you're going and you want to communicate with the person that you're with. And you don't have to do anything weird. You just talk normally and mm -hmm. it's really good noise reduction. There's no wind noise or anything. Yeah. They're, they're really awesome. If you go to TahoeRimTrail.org, there's plenty of details about the trail in each section. There are also plenty of bike rental places in this area too, so if you don't have a bike, it's okay, they got you covered. We decided since we're running out of time in Lake Tahoe. We wanted to just drive by this fallen leaf lake area that we were told by somebody that lives here that it's a neat place to go for a hike and it goes around the fallen leaf lake which is a little bit more secluded than the popular Lake Tahoe. But there's a campground too which you can kind of see. Let's see. Let me put the window down. You can kind of see back in there. Judging by the road coming up here, this is not a place we would camp. It's, it's, uh, it's very narrow. A it's very narrow road. We've had to pull over for a tiny uh, towable to get by us. Yeah. And then that's also, I think the bike trail continues on through this area. So there's a lot of cars here, so I don't know how hidden. I think a lot of trailheads around here too, though. Yeah, I think it's a popular spot for locals to come. Not only are bears prevalent in this area, but coyotes are as well. And she was saying that the coyotes are really, really nasty creatures and like to go after pets. So just be careful of that. Speaking of bears, we should tell them about the bear we had in our campground today. It was a bear of a time. There's a bear in the tree at the campground. It was almost like my worst nightmare, but it wasn't so bad because he was way up in the tree. However, it was like three RVs down from us. There are bears all over this area and in the campground that we're in. Funny, mostly scratching himself up there. Guys, our neighbors said right before it climbed the tree, it walked right in our sight. Yeah. <laughs> right in our sight. So the tree was two or three RVs yeah, down. Two, two sites down. Two yeah. sites down from where our RV was parked. Our that poor was neighbors though, their poor Jeep was underneath the tree and that bear had been pooing and peeing all over their Jeep. All morning, <laughs> all over their Jeep. And that's it, we're heading to Reno. Staying at a casino. 